This is the Unero Spectre S. We're setting it up for a customer and he had a special request. So I decided we're gonna show you guys what we're doing because this bike is already designed for two batteries. You can fit one in the frame right here and then you can fit a second battery in the middle of the triangle right here and it has a port already built into it. So effectively, there is a parallel circuit of sorts designed into the frame, which I think is pretty cool. But the customer's request was that we add a line for a third battery. So yeah, that seems kind of crazy, but Unero, who makes this bike, they actually just announced they're gonna be doing a crowdfunding campaign really soon, and their new bike they're coming out with has an option of one, two, or three batteries. So as crazy as that seems, I think we're actually gonna start seeing that from production bike soon. But there's a 99.999% chance you do not have three batteries. You probably don't even have two batteries. So I'm gonna show you how you could put two batteries on any bike, or if you really wanna go crazy, three or even more. There really is no limit once you learn the basics. This is a dual battery parallel connector that we sell at Area 13. And there's three connectors on it. And it's fairly simple to hook one of these guys up if you happen to have XT90 connectors, or we have adapters that go from these to XT60. Those are fairly standard on aftermarket batteries. Unfortunately, battery connections are not standardized by any means, so there's really no telling what you're gonna have. There's gonna be some sort of adapter required or some soldering required to actually get this done on a lot of bikes. But here's how this basically works. You'd have a cradle, maybe like this, and you'd have a plug. And this is going to the motor controller. That just came out of thin air. Here's one with an XT60 connector. So this would be easily plug and play. And when we introduce the parallel connector, instead of the battery going straight to the controller, your battery is gonna get plugged into here, into the parallel connector. And then this cable is gonna go to your controller. And now we have a second cable, and this is for a second battery. And this little guy has a smart circuit inside of it. So it's gonna pull from those two batteries evenly, no matter what the charge level is. Now the one requirement is that the batteries do have to be the same voltage. You can mix the capacity as far as amp hours as much as you want. You could have a 10 amp hour battery and a 20 amp hour battery. That doesn't matter as long as the voltage is the same. That point is critical. It won't work otherwise. And you can also run off of just one or the other battery. So you could leave one of these disconnected and it doesn't matter. It can run off of whichever battery happens to be plugged in. Or if one of them only has half of a charge, the battery that's full is going to be used until it gets to half and then both batteries are going to drain evenly. So how would you connect three batteries together? So you could use two parallel connectors. So the first one you would connect as normal. You have one lead going to your motor controller. You have one lead going to a battery. Now this lead that would normally go to your second battery, we're gonna instead plug into a second parallel connector. So now you have two additional leads. I'm gonna take this one away and kind of hide it because that's going to our motor controller. Now I have these three leads going to three separate batteries and this works perfectly fine. Just like the two battery setup, if any one of these is plugged in, your bike's going to work. If two are plugged in, it's gonna work. If three are plugged in, it's gonna work. And it's always gonna draw from the battery with the highest voltage, and then as it drains down, it's going to even these three batteries out and pull from all three evenly at the same time. And if you really want to go crazy, you could add another one and go to four batteries, another one to go to five batteries. Like I said, there really is no limit. Now, because the Spectre is already designed for two, we don't need a second parallel connector. There's already one built into the bike. We're effectively adding this is our second parallel connector. Now this does not use XT90 connectors. So there is going to be a bit of soldering required 
to make this setup work. For that, I'm gonna need a little bit of wire. I need an XT90 connector on one side to plug into the parallel connector. And the customer is requesting for his third battery, an XT60 connector. So we're gonna make an adapter and that's gonna have the length to get back onto the rear rack. And this is a special adapter designed for the Unero bike. So unfortunately, we are gonna have to cut this connector off and solder this onto our parallel connector. And I'm gonna need a few XT90 connectors to make all this happen. I think I got enough. Step one is to strip the wires back. And I'll be back, I need a little bit of water on my sponge. Okay, I got some solder. Definitely best if you tin the leads first, so get a nice coating of solder on them. So I've got one end soldered on. It's a good idea, and I forgot at first, when you're soldering an XT90, these connectors get so hot that sometimes they shift around and then you have a connector that doesn't want to connect very well. So always plug in the other side and while you're soldering, it just makes the job a lot easier. So instead of heat shrink, we can use one of these little guys. It slips in here and snaps into place. There we go, professional. Now I just need to put the XT60 on the opposite end of our extension. Luckily, all of these connectors, whether they're XT60s or XT90, they've got a little tiny engraving on the connector itself that tells you which one is positive or negative. So just follow those and you should be safe. All right, there's our second connector. So we have the extension. Once again, this is gonna go from the parallel connector. This is gonna go up to the back rack. This is for battery number three. I think I'm gonna start with the cradle next. You might be tempted when you're swapping one of these out to cut this connector off here and solder on the connector at that point. I'm not gonna do that and I will show you why. If you take this apart, there's a much cleaner and nicer way to do this. Just need a better screwdriver. How about this one? That worked. So there's four screws on the top of the cradle I'm gonna pop out. If I can avoid it, I don't like wire to wire connections. I like to run a solid wire from wherever I'm coming from to wherever I'm going. There's gonna be some situations where that's unavoidable, but this is not one. All right, now that I have this off, you can see this is how this is actually soldered on. So interestingly enough, there are four pins here. Only the outer two are being used. That's actually pretty normal. I see that on a lot of bikes. I could take the time to solder to both of these inner pins so you get a better connection, but I don't honestly know if the battery is using all four of these pins, but we can take a voltmeter and find out. So here are the pins on the battery and they are labeled positive, negative, and then in the middle is a one, two, and three. I'm just gonna stick a voltmeter to the outer two confirm that they're being used, which they should, the battery wouldn't work without those. And then I'll check the next two, because usually those are positive and negative as well. If they are, like I said, we can connect to both of those, get a better connection. If not, we'll just leave it as is. Turns out it is only the outer two, so that's all we use. The cradle is now ready for battery number two, so you can see I've got that plugged into the parallel connector here. This again is the extension that's going to battery number three is on the back rack. And to make this all work with battery number one, this is the plug that's going towards the controller. Technically it's going towards the other parallel circuit that's already built into the bike, but we gotta change this out to this fancy connector that we stole off of the cradle and then mount everything up. I'm just gonna double check the length that I need. So this connector is going to go here these connectors are pretty cool because they actually have a, a locking mechanism. So when you're pedaling or anything, you don't have to worry about this connector ever coming out. It is locked firmly in place. But all I need to do is get this to go to this guy. We're gonna mount it right behind the seat tube here. So it looks like it can be fairly short. I think we're gonna snip this guy off here, snip this one off here and that should be good. Because I don't have this plugged into anything, I'm just gonna make one 
cut to go right through the outer insulation here. Something I wanna warn people about because I've seen it done, do, don't ever cut through a cable like this. If your battery is connected somewhere, that is gonna be an immediate short and cause you a problem. All right, just connect these two together. On to the last piece of soldering. And there it is, a parallel connector set up for two batteries. Going back to the bike, that's gonna be for our controller and third battery. Now let's stick it on there and see if everything works. Where's that double-sided, or no, single-sided? Where's that foam tape you had? Let's tighten this thing down all the way. Now the cradle is securely mounted. One, two, three. It's a few days later. I wasn't able to finish the entire project that day, but it is all done, at least as far as the triple battery connection goes, which is of course the point of this video. So ignore any other wires or cabling or things that need to be tidied up on the bike. So inside the frame right here is a 48 volt, 17 amp hour battery. Going in the middle of the triangle is a 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery. And that is a function built into the stock Spectre. So to add a third battery, I've added that parallel connector. Now to try and tidy it up and clean it up, I have kind of this little neoprene wrap that's going around all of the connectors and the cable. One thing that I generally advise not doing is covering up completely the parallel connector because it needs some airflow to get rid of any heat as it's being used. So what I've done to try and avoid that is that I actually have the metal of the parallel connector stuck right to the aluminum frame. So the frame itself, the seat post area, is actually acting like a heat sink as well. Now I have a third lead that runs back up to the rear rack. And this is just kind of loose right here because the customer that's getting this bike has his own third battery that he's gonna have in a bag on the back here, or not. And he can just run off of a single battery, a dual battery, or a triple battery. I kind of like this sort of setup because it's really flexible. If you wanna go for a trail ride and you want the bike to be nice and light, you can just run the internal battery. If you think you're gonna go a little longer, put on the second one. If you're gonna go for that all day long, 100 plus mile ride, throw all three of them on there and you don't have to worry about range at all. Now there is some bad news about this, which is that the parallel connector that we currently offer sold out while I was filming this video. So unfortunately, when this video releases, you won't be able to go buy one of these. But there is good news as well, and that would be this. I am currently testing a new parallel connector that is an upgraded version. It's a little bit more compact, but in my opinion, more important than that is that this is rated for a maximum of 72 volts, but you'll notice that there are actually four leads on this. This is not for running three batteries. This is still only a parallel connector to run two batteries. The fourth lead is for something different. And it's something people have been asking about if it was possible. And the answer is not with this one, but yes, with this one. And that is charging. So jumping back to most parallel connectors like this, where they're designed to be somewhat smart and pick between whichever battery has the most voltage at any given time, it drains that down until all batteries are equal and then it drains from all of them together, which is a best case scenario for overall longevity and range on however many batteries you have installed. It has to prevent voltage from flowing from one battery to another. If it did allow that, the problem is if this one was fully charged to say 54 volts, this one is at a middle charge sitting right at 48 volts, and you plug those two in together, there's gonna be a sudden rush of current and voltage from this battery to that one. That's going to potentially ruin both batteries. And we really don't want that to happen, but by preventing flow between those two, 
That means for charging purposes, if you want to charge this bike, you have to charge each battery separately. So you can charge this battery by itself, this one by itself, and this one by itself. Now, one advantage to that is you could actually plug in three separate chargers and you're charging incredibly fast as opposed to one. But some people want the convenience of just being able to plug into one spot on the bike and it charges every single battery that is being used. So this parallel connector has some extra circuitry built in to do just that. So by plugging into this port right here, in theory, once again, I haven't tested this, we should be able to charge both batteries simultaneously. If you want to see if it passes our quality control, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll try and get that video out soon. And if you are running more than one battery, then battery maintenance is critical. So if you want to know how to get the most life out of your lithium ion batteries on your electric bike, go check out this video right here.